Hi everyone, how you doing? It's Ren here, welcome to my room. I bet you're, you don't know what I'm going to talk about right now. Let me tell you, I'm going to talk to you about this amazing day. Look at this. It's a gorgeous day once again, which is, as a southern man, something that impacts my mood massively. As you can see, my phone is still being sturdily you know, resting on uh, some uh, literature, romanticism and Final Fantasy, uh, you know, box. <laughs> and uh, the other big question that you're familiar with is, is Hazelnut on the bed or is she not? Because uh, I think yesterday I joked about, I, I did something not very funny about, uh, about her absence, pretending that she was a sweater. Uh, but now the question is, is she here with us today or not? Well, as a matter of fact, she is. Look at this. Oh no! This is not hazelnut. This is, this is Leo actually. This is, <laughs> this is my mom's stuffed animal. It's a stuffed little baby lion. Look at it. This doesn't look like hazelnut. Hazelnut is a little bit more expressive. The eyes, it's the eyes. Like uh, Leo is just, uh, you can see that he's kind of, he's woozy. Maybe he had a bit of whiskey or something. I don't know. But uh, he's still cute. Hazelnut likes to play with him. And she wins because he like his reactions are very slow. So when they play games, um, she tends to she tends to win. Um, but the topic of this video today is obviously not going to be all this silliness, <laughs> which are probably induced by the weather, induced by. Uh, the fact it's a Saturday and for some reason I'm in a good mood, so let's enjoy it. But no, today I wanted to talk about... I wanted to talk about the question of living in one's head. Because it's a very common... It's a very common trait that is associated with people of the... In the MBTI parlance, people of the introverted, intuitive... Or sorry, I meant to say... Yeah! Yeah, intru introverted and intuitive type. I should I should rather specify, including introverted intuitives, but also introverted feelers, also introverted thinkers, and I think that's it. Yes. Um, now you could you could sort of enlarge this group, which comprises after all only INFJs, INTJs, INTPs, and INFPs solipsistic people, supposedly according to this theory, you can enlarge it to maybe, um, you can enlarge it to, I would say, um, intuitives at large, not just in, in, intuitives that are uh, introverted. So you could add ENFPs, ENTPs, ENFJs, and ENTJs. Tentatively, I'm not saying this is true because we're gonna go into detail a little bit about whether that really applies. Um, let's say that, for example, it's not clear to me that an ENTJ lives in their heads that much, or that an ENFJ lives in their heads that much. Um, but let's assume that perhaps there is a slightly higher degree of likelihood that that's gonna happen with N types. And then you have the center types. Um, you are supposed to be more down to earth and so less kind of head in the clouds, I guess. You know, you have, the, you have the earth and the clouds. Head in the clouds are supposed to be the N types, more N types, and then slightly more grounded down to earth, the S types. Um, it's what's, what I find really interesting about, um, about the Jung functional analysis and, and the Myers-Briggs model based on Jung's work is is that in a sense, it, 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 it's, and I think potentially that's why I find it so attractive. On top of it being interested, I, I, I find like I have almost an emotional vested interest in it, in that model, is that it seems to, to propose or to, to, to further and to facilitate a, a kind of new valuation of personality, according to which it's, it's, no longer, it's no longer an issue to be an introvert, it's no longer an issue to be absence-minded potentially if you're like a head in the clouds kind of person it these can be strengths i think that until i came until I, I came into contact with this model 
I'd always been used to hearing or to, to imagining that the norms were more towards, you know, like types that ought to be envied. Like, this is not rational, but this is what was in my mind. And I think in what was in the minds of a lot of people, especially introverts, you know, types to be envied were the more extroverted and more grounded types because they knew, they just had more know-how about how to deal with the world. They were more streetwise, you know, in a way. Uh, and what's, and that's, I think, something that I had been kind of, exposed to and that I had experienced myself when I was in school especially and and even after that but models like the MBTI in in a sense they do contribute to like a slight reshifting of the valuation where well you could almost argue that the N types are now the ones that are arbitrarily considered kind of the, the enviable ones uh, but supposing that you don't subscribe to that which I I hope you don't and I do not myself um, there is still definitely a sense in which, like, an N-type, an introverted N-type, can be seen as, as a really worthy, valuable type. You know, not just a weird, awkward human being that doesn't know how to deal with people socially. <laughs> um, and so, I like that about the model. Um, that was for a little aside. Now, the other aspect of this is N-types absent-minded or living in one's mind, living in one's head, how true is that and how true is it of the INFJ and is the distinction between S-types and N-types valid as regards this kind of solipsism, right? Because, okay, I, I, I use the term solipsis, solipsism for the tendency to uh, live in one's mind and, and sort of be a bit out of touch with the external world. Now, it's a technical term but I want to use it now that I've made it clear to you what it is in case you're not familiar with the term because I don't want to be constantly repeating living in one's head or having a head in the clouds. So solipsism, solips, being solipsistic. Um, you know what? I think that it's kind of, it's not so easy to answer this question. I find that there's two questions here that I, I find particularly interesting or particularly fun, let's say, fun to, 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 to try to think about. The first would be, what would be the, the best criterion of demarcation between types that are not particularly um, solipsistic, head in the clouds, and those who are more likely to be? What is the line? Is it really uh, sensing versus intuition? Or is it more feeling versus thinking? Or is it more introversion versus extroversion? There are lots of different layers here, and there's probably also uh, the perception versus judgment. So e even if you take the dichotomy of the letters, there is a sense in which all four letters potentially contribute to this uh, solipsism or absence thereof. And so it will be interesting to try to to try to grasp um, which combination is the most likely to, to contribute to solipsism and which combination is the least likely. Now, the second thing, the second topic that I, would be fun to discuss, in my opinion, would be to try to determine which, which is the most solipsistic type, not necessarily, like not by some sort of necessary causation thing, but just prob prob probabilistically, probabilistically, you know, um, based on, say, like the fu function news um, and potentially also real life examples. So... Um, for example, I am often described by friends and by family as one of the most solipsistic people they've ever met. Uh, and I don't think I've ever met anybody who was more than me, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so, which is kind of not necessarily a good thing. If, it's, if you're too far down that road, you can end up sort of living in some alternate reality where what you think is true, what you think is moral, what you think is you know, has any sort of normative dimension to it is reached without consultation of other people. Now, that's not something I do. But in other ways, I can just be really absorbed in my own mind, which is why I often uh, describe myself as self-absorbed, because that's kind of what I am. And I think a lot of INFJs are self-absorbed. They're not self, um, they're not self-centered necessarily, you know, or they're not necessarily self-important, but I think self-absorbed absorbed into themselves, not by, not by any means the only ones, but I, I will offer my little theory later as regards to that and, and uh, 
you know, as regards trying to come to come across or to to you know to come up with a, a, let's say like a top three, top four um, of of the most likely to be uh, solipsistic kind of types. But perhaps let's keep this for last because this is another exciting aspect. So first of all, let's try to think about what could be this line of demarcation. So here's the thing. If I began with examples, I would say, and this I know that examples are, as a friend would say, ideographic uh, and local in many ways, and they do not have nomothetic, general, uh, law-like uh, validity, um, but they can be quite telling. So, for example, if if you if we can if you if we look at my family, right? So the the surviving members in my family, core family, there's five of us. It's my dad, there's my mom, there's my brother, there's my granny, and there's my my maternal granny, and then there's myself. My granny is ESTJ, I'm INFJ. My brother's INFP, my dad's ENFJ, and my mother is ISFP. Now. If I had to rank, if I had to rank people by the order of solipsism, <laughs> how would I rank them? Um, you know, I would say that for sure the one who is least head in the cloud is my granny, the ESTJ one. She's she's very practical, very pragmatic, in touch with the real world, and she doesn't seem to be often uh, stricken by these attacks of thoughts that are intrusive or that are not necessarily intrusive, that are enjoyable, but are just there and they have to be negotiated with. Um, now, I would say that she is the least, right? But, and I would say that I'm the most, I'm the most. I'm the one who's, who's always, like when I'm at home, when people like interact with me, it may not come across in the videos because you see this particular kind of social aspect of me, but um, I, half of the time people feel as if they have to wake me up because I'm so focused on something when I'm just in my mind, you know, so they can't just come up to me and, and say, oh, by the way, like, Ren, uh, can you do this for me? Or can we just talk about this or anything? It's, it's almost like, Ren, like, are you here? You know, it's 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 a very common thing. And my brother... Uh, somewhat jocularly commented on that, I think, um, in a, in one of the in one of the discussion videos we did together. So I'm 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 the most, and my granny is the least. So INFJ the most, ESTJ the least. Now between my dad, my my brother, and my mother, uh, it's not so easily determined. I would say that you know what I would say is that all of them are equally kind of. They spend quite a bit of time in their in their heads, and you might think, well, this is this is uh, maybe perhaps a bit surprising on the part of my ENFJ dad. I think my ENFJ dad does not spend lots of time thinking about his feelings, but he thinks about stuff a lot. And when he's driving, sometimes if I look at him, we're not talking, but someone like he's doing like this, he's t he's kind of talking to himself, and and he's he's not vocalizing it, but he's making. Like he's the lips are moving as if he were really talking. So and he does that a lot. So I think that he's he does a lot of it, and you can notice. Like my 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 dad and my mom, even though they're so different, they forget. Like whenever they go somewhere, they forget things. Um, my mom usually forgets things and then just spends the whole day without them, and then sometimes takes days to find where they are. And sometimes it's her phone or her computer, and she does that a lot. And she's a, she's a sensor, but she is, she's probably number two, you know? She's probably number two, I think, after me. Um, my brother and my dad are probably, again, quite, they're, they're very dissimilar, but I think they are probably number three sort of equals. Because my brother does not come across as particularly absent-minded, but he does spend a lot of time in his in his head. I, I do know that, uh, but he's not as absent-minded as I am, or my mother is, or even my dad is. Um, and my dad, I would say that I don't know. It's 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 like he has those moments where he's just completely lost in space, but then he comes back kind of quickly. So it's a uh, you see the, the 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 hierarchy features the sensor as the one of the sensors in the family as the least head in the clouds and an intuitive as the most but in the middle 
It's actually a sensor who's kind of close to me and more head in the clouds than two intuitives, my dad and my brother. So that's an example and that's not necessarily illustrative of, uh, you know, of a general law, like I was saying, but it seems to me that, it seems to me that, honestly, I wonder if the likelihoods, based on my observations of people, the likelihoods of being kind of head in the clouds might not be, I don't know, I think that's, the, the most likely to be are the introverted intuitives because they are introverted and because they are abstract. Um, so there's, there's, they're, they're turned towards themselves in a certain sense for, for a lot of their ideation and they're abstract. Um, but then after that, I think it's a bit of a, of a, a disputed ground, I think, between the intuitives that are extroverted so the uh, EN types, and then the, the sensors that are introverted and perceiving. You know, it seems to me that, that the per sensors that are, that are introverted but judging, like ISFJs and ISTJs, it seems to me that these are not too head in the clouds because they use SI together with the, an extroverted judgment function. And I think it seems to me that SI together with an extroverted judgment function seems to be very grounded. SI, despite being a perceiving function, seems very grounded in the real world, in the order of things, not head in the clouds. Like SI is not a domain of clouds, it's a domain of, it's a terrestrial domain. It seems to me. Uh, so extroverted sensors, I would say none of them would be particularly head in the clouds, but there can definitely be exceptions. Uh, I would say introverted sensors that are judgers not likely to be head in the clouds, but in introverted sensors that are intuitives, like ISFPs and ISTPs, well, you see, oh, sorry, I meant introverted sensors that are perceivers, not intuitives. ISTPs, would they be lost in their in their thoughts? I don't know enough ISTPs to know that. Maybe, you, maybe there are some ISTPs watching my channel who can let me know. I don't know enough. I'd, I'd imagine that ISTPs, because they use TI and SE, are not particularly head in the clouds. But my ISTFP mum, I don't know if she is an exception among ISTFPs or if she is indicative, you know, with the stack F, FI, SE, and I, of a potentially very somewhat absent minded, someone in her mind kind of person. Uh, or rather, I should say, very. Um, so the, the, the location. You know, the, in that hierarchy of the ISFP seems to me potentially, uh, potentially dissimilar to that of the other sensor types, possibly. Perhaps the other sensor types are not counting the ISFP more likely to be, to be, solid, to be not solipsistic because they're down to earth grounded, etc. And then among the, I would say that if there should be exceptions among the, the intuitive types, among the extroverts in the intuitive types, Pure, based purely on intuition, I would say ENTJs because because of their dominant E, which is a very grounded, which is a very grounded function. And then uh, when it's dominance, and and then you know it deals with the external logic of the real world, um, and also the fact that their SE is quite is quite uh, is quite high up. It can be quite well developed, and SE is a grounded function as well. And by extension, that can apply to ENFJs as well. Uh, although perhaps a little bit less, right? Um, so that's for my preliminary discussion. I, I guess I'll, I'll give myself another five, six minutes to talk about uh, the question of who is the most solipsistic of the solipsistic. I think traditionally, and this is, this is, this is again, intuition speaking, but it seems to me that like the, the debate is between INTP and INFJ. Um, because, because, um, well, that's a good question. Why? Why is that the case? I think, well, because they're introverted uh, intuitives, so quite likely to, to, to have that solipsistic aspect to their personality and their, their kind of cognitive, their cognitive world. Uh, 
I think the INTJ, despite being a dominant perceiver, is not included usually in in being up there with the INTP and the INFJ because of TE. And what I describe in the case of the ENTJ applies to the INTJ less so because their TE is only auxiliary, but still gives gives them sort of a a connection, a, a functional connection with the logic of the real world that tends to ground them, I think, more directly than INFJs and INTPs. The thing of the thing about the thing about INTPs and INFPs is that like even if we don't mention the INFJ for now, like INFPs to me are not necessarily less in their minds than INTPs, from my experience. INTPs they like talking about real real world stuff. They spend a lot of time thinking. But uh you know, they've got SI, some sometimes quite well developed. Um, and it seems to me that they don't necessarily they don't necessarily like to um, to just explore they, they like to they like to explore abstract stuff for the sake of it, it's true. But the the abstract stuff has to be kind of grounded in some logic a lot of the time, which is linked with TI they're not necessarily going to be as open they will be to some extent but as open to pure spiritual spiritual exploration without any potential logical grounding to the possibility of say of the paranormal of the spiritual of the transcendental as much as as much as a lot of INFJs and potentially INFPs as well uh, and I think that's because NF NF idealists in some ways can be seen depending on how you look at the, the debate uh, the NF types as even less grounded than INTPs and INTJs because they tend to gravitate towards um, a lot of the time they gravitate towards topics that are not necessarily grounded in the real world in a sensing sense but neither would be grounded in the world in a logical sense you know it just be the beyond the, the meaning of things you know the, the, the this, this this little something else that cannot really be explained by the sheer brute fact of existence and being in nature with other things and you notice a lot of the, the writers and the philosophers that have explored these topics are nfs a lot of the time they're nfps and nfjs and i think that it brings an interesting alternative to this usual all too all too common categorization of as of the intp as the most uh, head in the clouds type. I'm not sure that's quite true. Then if I had to decide between the INFJ and the INFP, I would say that the INFJ still wins the the solipsistic tournaments and is the most solipsistic, like most likely to be. Uh, not because I want to confirm, you know, like theoretically confirm observations that I can make about myself and that other makes other people make about me. But also, you know, simply looking at the functions. It's true that we have FE, and that's probably what's keeping us in touch with the real world. But in other ways, for like, especially for a lot of INFJ males, you have well-developed TI and well-developed NI. I mean, when you're in an NITI loop, what is what is more solipsistic than an NITI loop? These are probably the two most abstract functions. NI and TI are probably the two most abstract functions. And the INFJ has both of them, and the INFJ is capable of having them really well developed and when an INFJ engages in thinking and in activities that do not require FE directly they're going to be spending a hell of a lot of NI and TI and they can be just in a completely other dimension to an extent that I don't think any other type can but let me know in the comments if you agree if you disagree what alternatives would you present either in terms of this demarcation between the head in the clouds types and the not so head in the clouds type what could it be um, and then which one is the most and why. All right, enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. I, thought, I hope this was interesting, and I'll be catching you very soon, either tomorrow or next week. See ya.